studio this week doing it solo. Andrew Wood not able to make it out for this one, unfortunately, but uh, he'll be back, I'm sure, before the end of the season, and we'll have a good time. We're thinking about some fun stuff, uh, potentially for Salt Lake City. So we are in Philadelphia. It is the second to last 250 East round of the season. Uh, it is also the third to last round, four fi- third to last 450 round of the season, and potentially a championship clinching round on the docket for Braden Carter. So we'll follow that storyline and see how it develops throughout the night. But uh, before we do that, we're going to check something out real quick right here and look at our 250 Supercross West standings as we'll pull these up on screen. And if you notice, there's only two rounds of this championship left, and it is impossible for John Heilman to usurp. Seth Shirley for the top spot any longer. That means that Seth Shirley is our 250 Supercross West champion, second year in a row. And we're actually going to talk to Seth Shirley here in just a minute. So we'll give him a call up in in just a moment. But yes, if you were not with us here last week uh, for the 250 East West showdown from Nashville, the perfect season may be over. Seth Shirley has not won every single race this year, but a second place finish last week in Nashville did get him enough points to clinch the title two rounds early. Next time we'll see him is uh, in Denver. We may actually see him tonight on a 450, but in Denver next week, we'll see him back on the 250 trying to uh, at least win every single race but one. And technically speaking, he has beaten every single West Rider all season long. So yes, he has now clinched a couple rounds early. And uh, while we're here now, why don't we go ahead and see if we can give him a call. He might still be qualifying if he is. Um, We'll see what's going on. Um, but just want to make sure that he is good to go before we give him a call. So yeah, Seth Shirley uh, has got it done. All right, so he is ready to go. Let's go ahead and give him a call up and talk about this championship. And here we are now joined by the man of the hour, Seth Shirley. Well, you clinched the title last week in Nashville, so you've had a week to kind of sit on it, think about it. Um, Yeah, what does winning this title again, going back-to-back 250 West, mean to you? Uh, just having fun. I mean, it's cool and all, but I just enjoy playing the game. Take me through a little bit. Last week, you came so close to winning that one. You you didn't get the uh, perfect season, which was amazing that you got it as far as you did. We're around seven before it was broken, but man, so close at the line. How did it feel to come up just a bit short there? I was bummed mainly just because it was 0.5. Like I wish it would have been like 15 or 20 or something, but just knowing that the two mistakes and the whoops cost me. It was bumming, but I can't be too mad about it. I said at the beginning, like before the season even started, that it'd be cool to go perfect. I didn't really expect to, but to go seven in a row, which I believe is the longest win streak in 2 Supercross RF history, is it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, like you said, you maybe didn't expect it to happen. When did you start believing it was possible throughout the season? Round three. Whenever I came from 22nd to first. Yeah. Because I crossed the finish line on lap three, I think 35 seconds down (laughs) of P1 and came back. Yeah. uh, You obviously get to clinch the title two rounds early too. So um, anything fun or special that you're going to try to accomplish in these last two rounds at Denver and Salt Lake, or is it try to win out and get those 12 uh, 250 Supercross wins on your, on your name card there? I'm trying to win out. I'd like to have number one wins list. Just to, I feel like that'd be a pretty cool stat to have. And just because GS4 has had it for 10 or more years now. So Balzer has, so, Balzer has a chance, obviously, tonight to take over the, the sole possession of the one spot. And then you can tie him next week if it does happen. Um, would it be cool for you? Like, Are you even cheering it on that if he wins tonight, you could win next week? And then you guys go into the showdown really to try to settle it between you two. I'm all I'm all for a battle. I feel like it'd be fun. Like I I apologize to him in DMs. But I just want to say I'm sorry, Rasmus, again for accidentally knocking him down last week. I got a little bit sketchy in the rhythm, and we came together and put him on the ground, and then I crashed about two turns later. But uh, so for I, you, oh, keep going. I definitely want to see a battle, though. I feel like it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, for you as well, you told me before the season that you were going to go to 450 Outdoors no matter what. So now you're looking at two more races on a 250 really ever in sim before you're you're a full-time 450 guy. Uh, Does it feel like real yet that this transition, you're already there, 
now you're going to be the big dog in the 450 class before we know it. Oh, for sure. I've been practicing a little bit throughout the weeks on some outdoors on the 450, and I'm really liking it. So I have, I'm hoping to go out in the outdoors and do the same thing as last year and just be consistent and hopefully contend at the end. Are we seeing you tonight on a 450? Yeah, I'm going to try and get the second 450 one of the season, but it's definitely going to be tough. Carter, or Colby, they're all tough to beat. So it's really going to be all about the start and stand up the first couple of laps. Absolutely. Well, congratulations again, uh, clinching that title two rounds early, back-to-back 250 Supercross West champion Seth Shirley. Um, I'm sure you've already celebrated a little bit, but uh, yeah, from us here, uh, big congratulations, man. Thank you. And thanks again for the streams, always helping keeping the game up and running. Oh, you know me. I'm just trying to make you guys look good. (laughs) All right, Seth, uh, have a good one tonight. Good luck in the 450 class, and uh, we'll see you next week in a 250 in Denver. You too. Thank you. All right. That is Seth Shirley, two-time 250 West Supercross champion. Just getting a little chance to chat with him. All right. Let's jump back in and talk about qualifying really quickly here from Philadelphia as Braden Carter has gone fastest at a 51-8 over Colby Eaglin at a 52-3. Tharp Leclerc twice for some reason. I don't know why Leclerc's on here twice, but it is the exact same lap time. So I'm assuming that's just a technical glitch. And uh, T. Lang also mixing it up. So we got a lot of guys in the 52s, a couple guys in the 53s. We have Castellaneta on here twice. I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm sure the Race Factory guys are working through that. And then in the East, we got Seth Carr going fastest. Partolo Balzer, remember, he is still trying to not only become the all-time 250 winner, uh, but also maybe clinch this title again. We'll have to uh, lay out some championship scenarios in the 250 East class, but that is qualifying. So let's talk about 250 East real quick. We got four points between Balzer and Carr going into these final two rounds. So technically speaking, Balzer can clinch tonight with a disaster night from Seth Carr and a win or second place finish for Balzer. Say if Seth Carr doesn't make the main event, for example, if Balzer gets first or second, he could clinch his title. Hasn't gone that way. Carr has been slowly inching back into this fight and uh, making things interesting. And we'll see if that continues here tonight. Uh, as uh, they could potentially eliminate Maxime Vanderbeek and Austin Partolo from contention as well. Only four riders still mathematically eligible in this 250 East Division. 450 class, Braden Carter is trying to get above the 52-point mark uh, on Colby Eagland here before we leave here tonight, and he would be crowned your four-time Moto Option Supercross champion. So theoretically speaking, he would need to win and have Eagland finish third or worse for him to be crowned champion for the fourth year in a row. So we'll try to follow that as well. Um, but yeah, Carter is up by 48 points on Eaglin for, and 64 points on Alexis Leclerc rolling into tonight. So a couple championship clinching scenarios potentially on the docket here tonight. And this is the racetrack that they are going to be met with uh, here tonight in Philadelphia. Not this one. This is Nashville from last week, but we're going to disconnect and reconnect. And I might have to leave the game momentarily to turn off editor. We'll have to see how my frame rate is. But yeah, no A-Wood this week, Gavin. Uh, I forget what he said. I think he's working tonight, unfortunately. Uh, he took a couple days off to go out to Nashville, hung out with A-Wood this weekend in Nashville, ran into a couple of fans and some stuff like that. So great to see you guys out there. Never been to Nashville, Nashville before, so that was <clears throat> really cool to uh, go out there and check it out. He locked up in Nashville, yeah. Logan Mortberg out here. So let's show you guys this track for a minute. Um, If you haven't watched the preview lap from earlier today, really, really tight first turn, flat corner, nowhere to go, and it's going to be crucial to get this first rhythm section clean and get out of there. Out of the second corner, you got a nice big super cross triple, lay it over for the crowd, and then a couple different options in this next rhythm. I think we'll see some of these 250 guys that like to go over this table so they can quad into right here and then either triple triple or maybe even quad double depending on how they're feeling through there but there's also an on off quad triple line through there that's pretty fast almost and I have to imagine the 450 guys will more often than not be going for that one and then a little turning roller section through here pretty unique section this week uh, to see how that one develops and whether or not we're going to see some good ruts through there and then uh, through the whoops we go get up on top of these suckers and lug the bike the final corner and up and over the finish line jump 
into this little roller, land off this roller, get to that inside rut, and then power back down into turn number one. So there's a lot of different options at play on this track here tonight. Pretty keen to see um, how each one plays out. You got this little step on, step off double option right here, for example. So let's see if we can get all the way back around and do this big quad line that I'm talking about. I feel like most 450 guys will come out of this corner, go step on, step off, and then quad. So if you're looking at the screen right now, you're going to see the step on, step on, off. And then there's a big single, two little singles, and a big single. And I think most everybody on a 450 will go for that quad and then triple up to the inside line before the Supercross triple. I think this track will end up being a little bit one line, but it will be mistake ridden. Uh, riding this track earlier today, it was really hard to get some consistent laps down. So I think that's where it will bite people more often than not. But uh, yeah, I think. Pretty much everyone's going to funnel into the main lines. You're going to want to hug tight on those 90s. Uh, maybe before the whoops, you'll have guys going outside to make sure they get a drive into uh, that nine set over there. But uh, certainly an interesting racetrack. Very Foxborough 2018 vibes with those kind of rollers through the corner there. Uh, Foxborough was like that. Um, Detroit was very similar to this one year as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty kind of, I don't want to say normal racetrack because it's a little bit off kilter, but. Just got a text from Alex Heckman that 450 qualifying is whacked. Did see that when we we're loading through. So I'm not sure how that's going to affect. Not sure how that's going to. Not sure how that's going to affect stuff, but um, yeah, we'll see. All right, so we're loading into 250 heat one right now. I think 250 east heat number one. How's the chat feeling tonight? I got 106 people hanging out. Good to see you guys this late in the year. It always winds down. I feel like we're going to have a big kickoff party at Paula, and there's going to be a ton of people tuning back in for nationals. But we get deep in the season, and people are. So yeah, 250 heat number one on the track right now. Let's get our stuff going on here. We got uh, overlays and all that fun stuff. Whoop whoop. Sorrow's still here. Here every week. He knows what else. Up. Jack Fowler, Liam Atkinson, Trent Adams, Seth Crotty, Cole Vance, Rogan McIntosh, Jesse Furtado, Jack Gatlin, Jeff Cooper, Jared Gummison, Tom Quino, Dustin Silvis, Jack Martin, TJ Harrison, JT George, Nick Thomas Sunis, Brady White, Ryan Swanson, and Harrison Gafford make up the runners in this heat race. And before I forget, let me get live timing up. So I don't forget to take a look at this as it happens. Here we go. All right. Baby NyQuil is up in here feeling good, I hope is what he was trying to go for. Uh, av above average EA skate is here for his dogs, Ryan Chowsey and Holiak. Ooh, Connor Holiak's back. All right, here we go. Uh, Rose P18 wants to know who's running the number one this heat. That is Rasmus Balzer, defending 250 East Supercross champion. And we are revved up and ready to go here on the gate in Philadelphia, folks. Strap in, we're dropping the gate. In Pennsylvania, launching into this first turn, it's the 417 and the 35 bumping bars, and they go wide. That was McIntosh going down. Tom Quino grabs a whole shot on the 815 machine. He's out front early on. Fast Frenchman on the DW program, taking the early lead. Nick Thomas Sunis with a good start up in second, just ahead of Liam Atkinson, and now we're going to see the different options. Step on, step on, step off. Then we'll go triple, and then triple single to the inside. I like the option Thomas Sunis is taking there. They kind of end up pretty evenly. So I like that they're they're both working out pretty good right there in this 250 division. And I'm sure we're going to see some Bobby Big Lines when the 450 guys hit the track. Tight battle for second place. So as Atkinson almost gets into the back of Thomas Sunis. And the field is spreading out. The 1E of Rasmus Balls are currently 16th place on the running order as they come through to complete lap number one. Tom Quineau leading here in Philadelphia. 250 East, heat number one back down onto this start straight and into turn one. Everybody's going to want to hug tight. 
looks like maybe over triple is going to be the preferred option. I would have thought guys would step on off. They are not. And a big shout out. The Seth Shirley 441 for the Am the Prime sub. I almost called it Amazon Prime. Mine just goes to Prime every time. But uh, for the Prime sub, big shout out to uh, everybody that continues to support week after week. And yeah, Quino's making it look easy at the front. Thomas Una is still in a dogfight here with Atkinson. Atkinson is going to square it off and finally get to the inside to make the pass and then almost go down and allow Thomas Unis right back by. So just as quickly as he had made that pass, makes a mistake and allows the 933 machine back through. Harrison Gafford is knocking on the door behind these guys. And then it's Ryan Swanson on the 137 machine. Rounding out our top five. Jack Fowler in sixth, Jack Mark seventh, JT George is in eighth, and Cole Betts is in our final transfer spot in ninth. So for the one E machine of Rasmus Balzer, he's really got to get on his horse here pretty soon. Struggle bus outside a transfer spot. Got the 67 machine of Furtado right in front of him. Thought about going to the inside, but backed out of it. We're going to see that inside line really dig out and make a nice big run for these guys to lay into. Cuts back up underneath. Dooley's, Trilies even. Balls are kind of by comes. Let everyone know around him that he would like to go by, but he enjoys the dualies as they happen. Oh, we got some quad city up there as well. Quad double to the inside for Furtado and Betts. And Oh, getting whipped on Jack Gatlin lays it over on Cole Betts. And this is a good fight. None of these guys are in transfer spot, though. Look at how tight it is mixing it up in these rollers. And Balzer is going to go through on Cole Betts. End of the whoops. Balzer charging down the inside. He's going to make a couple passes and almost get chopped off by Furtado, who he still can't make the pass on yet. But he's up to 12th now. Making good progress. He's going to try to slingshot down the start straight and get to this inside line. Oh, Furtado, he pushed him out. Does he get the pass done? Furtado's trying to double back to the inside to keep it tidy. Squares it off. What a beautiful line by Balzer. And he also made another pass. I think that was maybe JT George who went down. So Balzer is now up into 10th, uh, just outside of transfer. And we're seeing what it's like to have to work your way forward. Balzer's doing a really good job of finding the opportunities where they are, squaring off corners and not getting caught up in any of the drama. And now he's all over Ryan Swanson for this final transfer spot. Well, then, well, Swanson's going to tuck inside. Balzer's going to get a run into the whoops. He's right on his rear fender. They're both kind of hopping. And Balzer goes down on Swanson's rear tire. Going to get hit and lose three, four... Five almost positions. Yes, five as Furtado takes out Cole Betts, or JT George, excuse me. So Furtado and uh, Balls are now linked together again, but Balls are back to 13th, and we have only got a minute and a half left on the clock in this heat race. The Balls are still has his work cut out for him. Let's peek back out front. See, it's Nikki T, Nick Thomas Sunis with the lead, and right as we go to him, he lays it down in the whoops. But fortunately for him, Atkinson goes down right behind him. So Nick Thomasunas is going to hold on to the lead. Quino, who was leading, went down. And Thomasunas is on his way to potentially win in this heat race, although Quino is going to make him work for it. Cat's going to love Nikki T leading this one. It's confusing. Nikki T, number 67 in your program book, 933 on the motorcycle and 999 on the back, is always keeping us on our toes. That quadding and going for the quad again. Well, a little deep on the triple at least. The outside line is just hitting his marks though. Try not to make that mistake and allow Quino back in. Jack Mark also hanging out back here. And then Atkinson and McIntosh, who was down in the first turn. He was one of the riders we saw coming in there side by side. And Thomas Tunis is down. Weird spot to go down. But Thomas Tunis does hit the deck and hand it back over to Quino, who himself is hopping through the whoops awkwardly, and they have not eclipsed the time just yet. There is still enough time on the clock to make it another lap through, so now two laps to go, and Thomas Soon is dealing with pressure from McIntosh in a battle for fourth place. McIntosh to the inside, gonna get that pass and put Thomas Soon is on the ground. So 
Thomas Noon is now back to fifth. There's Adams in sixth, Fowler seventh, Gummison eighth, and Swanson is ninth. But here comes Balzer inside line after the finish, trying to make that same pass work. And Swanson is unable to make it uh, stick in that position. So Balzer goes by, and he is now into a transfer spot. But not out of the woods just yet. That corner, jumping in, he's right behind the 77 of Gummison, who's in eighth. Outside the in, going outside there gives you the opportunity to scrub a little bit harder, and Gummison jumping off the track right there, so Balzer takes advantage, and he goes into eighth. Ooh, that's not gonna help, oh! Almost comes together with Gummison. Now he's hopping through the whoops offline right there, but he will make it through. It is going to be a little nip and tuck here for the 1E on this final lap. Battle for the lead is on. We have lost Quino, and suddenly Jack Mark is leading. Atkinson is behind him, but Mark is jumping his way through. I don't know why he's running the number one bike. I don't know who uh, is normally number one on the impact program that they got the red plates. Is that Bono maybe? runs an EU. Now he is trying to take this heat race victory. He has got Atkinson and McIntosh right on his heels. He's getting sideways in the whoops. He's trying to hold it on. Atkinson goes over the bars, brings McIntosh with him, and Jack Mark is your heat race winner to kick things off here in Philadelphia. Atkinson's trying to pick it up. McIntosh getting going. They're going to get going right here in front of Trent Adams. Looks like Quinault went by. Amasuna's hopping through the whoops. Balls is trying to make it. He will get through and go through in seventh. Fowler makes it through in eighth. Gummison is down at the end of the whoops. Is he going to pick it up in a transfer spot? Yes, he will. There's still plenty of time. And the 77 machine goes through to the main event. Got Gatlin there in tenth. Will miss out. Swanson also. He was up there. He misses out. And we got a lot of guys back here. Seth Crotty, Jeff Cooper, Jesse Furtado. Justin Silvis, Cole Betts didn't make it. And then Swanson, who we saw, TJ Harrison, Harrison Gafford, Brady White, and JT George going to the LCQ. All right, penalties are in. Let's take a closer look here. Balzer gets around Thomas Sunis for sixth on penalties, but that is the only change in the top nine positions. Jack Mark gets the heat race win and goes to the main event with either first or second game pick. Well done to Jack Mark. All right, back in our intermission screen here, hanging out. Let's get Seth Shirley off the screen because he'll be on the screen shortly in the 450 heat races. I uh, want to give a couple quick shout outs to iGavin021 for the sub and Racer D Rat, Racer Rat, my old buddy there from Reflex, subbing up for his fourth month as well. Another month, another set of dualies. Thanks for being here, Papa Kellen. No, thank you, Racer Rat, for being here. I got to thank you, all, you guys, every single week for showing up and making my nights a lot of fun. Love to see the banter going on in chat already. A Woods very upset. His buddy JT George representing P20. Not a good look right there for JT George. You hate to see it. Uh, but uh, Trauma Zone right there. Also stoked to see Jack Mark representing New Zealand, putting the Kiwis up on top in that heat race. Good times. Keen official wants a stretch, so we'll stretch it out for you. Oh, went and uh, threw the baseball around a little bit today, so my arms are stiff. And, uh, yeah, so appreciate the stretch. We got fresh Dr. Pepper up here. Not sponsored by them, but that'd be sweet if we were. And getting ready to go racing here in 250 heat number two, which will feature Seth Carr of the Rainbow Six squad. Trying to make it happen. <laughs> it would just landed in DFW. So that's right. He, he wasn't going to be back from Nashville yet. Lands late tonight. Um, won't be back until after the stream is over. We could do a... If he drives down after he gets back, we could do a uh, stream after dark. But that would be after after dark. He'd be here late. So that's why he's not here. Well, he got down in Nashville this weekend, that's for sure. Handing out drinks like it's nobody's business. 
<clears throat> Above average would tune in for that after dark talk. It would be a good time, to be honest, though. Maybe we'll have to do that after Salt Lake. See, Awood could be at my house by 2 a.m. <laughs> Jesse MX, all the novice riders in pro. Jesse, we saw you clean out. Uh, who was that? JT George. You just absolutely slaughtered him in the last turn. So you got to cruise a little bit. All right, let's get back into our main screen here and get ready to go racing for 250 heat number two. Good to hang out with you guys in the intermission. Will now, Alex Zellner, Carl Novak, Michael Mudge, Kyle Boardman, Logan Mortford, Garrett Hollenbeck, Chris Sir McPherson, Chris Young, Max Wilczek, Cody Branson, Joey Carter, Jet Wisdom, Cole Gress, Miles Gilmore, Ryan Chousey, Jeremy Schiavro, Seth Carr, Austin Bartolo, and Daniel Mills in 250 heat number two here in Philly. Honestly, I should have what I should have done tonight is really ordered a Philly cheesesteak from somewhere. Big Philly cheesesteak guy, gotta love those. Honestly, totally didn't even realize that. I need to go buy a good Philly cheesesteak. Has anybody been to this stadium that they're racing in this weekend? Like, what's the go-to Philly cheesesteak place in this stadium? Definitely got to get that. I'm all about it. Give me some cheese on that. Definitely into it. All right. 250 heat number two. The board is sideways. Off the track goes the man. And we are racing couple guys hit the gate. Actually, three different guys hit the gate. One of them, Garrett Hollenbeck. And it's tight into the first turn. Joey Carter swings wide. Daniel Mills up the inside. He's going to get the early lead. But Joey Carter, jumping down the inside, takes it over. Dr. Do racing. P1 here in Philly, laying it down on the 444. I am almost positive this is going to make it on the Instagram Reels YouTube shorts page with Joey Carter ripping a whole shot in this heat race. Coming up a little bit short, out to the outside goes Seth Carr and he makes the pass. Oh, Carter front flip to death and down out of second place. I'm not sure if he hit Seth Carr, but that was a little bit of an awkward crash. And that's Seth Carr now into the race lead on the 15 machine. Hopping through the whoops a little bit. These 250 guys, man, every week it's so tough to get up on top of those things. And it looks like it may be bit D Mills or somebody out of the two spot because Cody Branson is taking it over. Mills has slipped back to third. And those whoops wreaking havoc in this 250 division. Those Diabro finds himself up in the four spot early on. Just ahead of Max Wilczek. As all these guys are just trying to settle in and going down out of second is Cody Branson. Schiabro lands on him. A couple other guys having to avoid him. Oh, that was tight there with the 79. And Branson picks it up right next to Kyle Boardman. And is going to repass him. And we got three different rhythm lines being used right here. But Joey Carter is going to jump through all of them to make the pass into 10th. They're chasing this man right here, Christopher McPherson, on the 69 machine. And McPherson is trying to make it into the main event as going down on the inside as a Cowie rider right there. That may have been Carl Novak. On the number 31 Verb Moto Machine. As McPherson hopping through the whoops. And Carter now sits on the bubble. The life comes at you fast. You whole shot the heat race. You think all is well. Suddenly you're battling for a transfer spot. And that's what happens when you crash early in the race. But good news for Carter is that he did crash and is still in a transfer spot battle. Because there's also the chance that you crash in the start and then crash on the first lap. And you could be like our guy Miles Gilmore down in 19th place right now. Not enjoying yourself whatsoever. So Carter inching up on these guys a little bit. Getting close to McPherson. And McPherson in turn inching up on Michael Mudge. Good fights this mid-pack battle. Oh, going down in front of these guys is Mortberg, and Carter goes down avoiding him, as does Branson. Are these guys all going to make it through? Oh, no, they are not. Everybody crashed, including Mudge at the end of the whoops. These, these whoops are just, man, they're coffins tonight. Taking everybody with them. Boardman gets up right in front of Will now, who goes up and over the bars. And I think Joey Carter crashed twice, because now he is in 13th when he was in 9th, and everyone behind him went down. 
Maybe he got hit from behind as he picked it back up. Let's peek back out front and see our race leader halfway through this one, Seth Carr. Only four points behind Rasmus Balzer in this championship. And Balzer, who had an eventful heat race, had to come from 18th place to get into a transfer spot, is seeing his title rival have it a little bit easier in this second heat. Cruising out front, seven second lead. Best lap of the race at a 54.843 for the Rainbow Six number 15 machine. And Seth Carr is really peaking at the right time of this season, man. He has upped his game to put the pressure on Balzer down the stretch of this title fight. And balzer has been there, done that. He knows how to win this championship, but Seth Carr is forcing him to lean on that knowledge to make it work and if he can get it a little bit closer here tonight we are going to be set up for one heck of a showdown in Salt Lake City in two weeks time. So far so good in the heat race. Max Wilczek just got around D Mills for second. So Mills slipping back into the three spot now but holding steady his buddy A Wood in chat not excited for the prospect of D Mills throwing this away. He's going to be really annoyed if he does that. Oh, sideways and down goes Max Wilczek on the Digital Worldwide number 181. I'll lose several positions here and fall back to sixth behind McPherson. So Alex Zellner, Schiabro went by, and now McPherson up into the top five as well. And then you got Boardman, Mortberg, and Chris Young is in the final transfer spot just ahead of Garrett Hollenbeck, but down goes Boardman. And geez, man, these guys are swap city through the whoops. So let's see, that would have put, oh, dooleys, Joey Carter and Cody Branson absolutely tossing salads out here. We're going back and forth on the start straight. Carter's trying to make that pass. Branson gonna block him at all costs, blow the rut, maybe lose two spots in the process. And uh, Carter continues on. So now Hollenbeck is in our final transfer spot. Remember, he hit the gate off the start and I believe was caught up in some first turn chaos. So that's why he was a little bit further back. He is mixing it up in the top five of this championship throughout the season. So he would very much like to make the main event. New fastest lap of the race just got ran from Austin Partolo in 13th place. So Seth Carr's teammate trying to make it in. You got Chris Young hopping through the whoops, man. It is just hold on and pray in this 250 class to the whoops every single lap. And I don't blame him. Even on a 450, I was struggling on these things. So Seth Carr is going to bring us down past the mechanics area. This time by, he will see the white flag waving. One lap to go. Ryder going down in front of him. The 699 of Miles Gilmore being put a lap down in this one. As Carr does indeed take the white flag. Oh, whoa, whoa, Schiabro sideways. What a save in front of D Mills. And Mills is like, all right, hold it together, Squiddy. We got one more lap to put these old knees of ours in the main event. A couple OGs in this game. I think Schiabro, man, was it? He has a win to his name in this 250 class. And if I remember right, 2015 Dallas was the first win that Jeremy Schiabro collected. So he's been around a minute. Daniel Mills, one of the lowest UIDs, user identification numbers in this game. So he's been around more than a minute. Uh, Seth Carr is not going to like to see that he is lapping his teammate, who is still in 15th place. So Partolo is going to go to the LCQ. Carr is going to let him go, but it's not really going to matter. So Seth Carr takes 250 heat number two. And puts the pressure on Rasmus Balzer. He's going to have an optimal gate pick compared to him going into these main events. As D Mills hops through. And Schiabro will indeed hold on to third just in front of Zellner. McPherson fifth, sixth for Mortberg. Ahead is behind Novak? Yes. Yeah, Carl Novak going down right there. Max Wilczek here in seventh. Eighth for Chris Young and ninth for Garrett Hollenbeck. Joey Carter's going to hail Mary the whoops. Let's see if he gets it done. He's launching, and he is yard sailing. Hollenbeck goes to the main event and sends Joey Carter along with Cody Branson, Michael Mudge, Austin Partolo, Kyle Boardman, Will Now, Miles Gilmore, Ryan Chousey, Carl Novak, Jet Wisdom, and Cole Gress. 
last chance qualifier as well. So it was Novak who we saw there on the 156. Let's see if Carter had kept it close. Dang, man, if Joey Carter just actually stayed on two wheels, he would have made the main because Cody Branson, no, excuse me, Chris Young, well, no, nah, it, it would have been close. May not have made it anyway. Hollenbeck goes through with Young, Will Check, Mortberg, McPherson, Zellner, Skiabro, Mills, and Carr, the main event. All right, 450 Heat. Coming up next, we'll jump back in the intermission screen. Trying to trying to do this a little bit more, be a little bit more personal with you guys. As we get later in the season, I think the broadcast loosens up a little bit. It kind of was looser this year anyway, but hang out with the chat and see what you guys are chit-chatting about. We got some MX Bikes talk going on in here. Awood says his gifted sub just expired two days ago. He's asking for a hookup. Man's was poor. Yeah, two one eight ones is crazy. We got to get Wilcheck and Mortberg to uh, get on the same page here. I don't know if they want to have a Rochambeau for it or whatnot. Uh, I did download your stuff, Jesse. I'm pretty sure at least. If you're Jesse Furtado, yes, I definitely have your skins. We got a Let's Go Cass. We got a Let's Go Chris. Um, it's all over the board. These guys are cheering for everybody tonight. So what do we think of this racetrack? Let's uh on a scale of one to ten, ten being the best, give me a number. What are we thinking, people? I don't know what to think about it just yet. In some regards, I'm like sweet, technical, but also not enough bull berms. We got Braden Tharp with a ten. Jesse's putting it at a seven out of ten. But Tharp does hate the whoops. I don't know. Can you give a track a perfect ten if you hate the whoops? Look at Awood's drinking beer and watching the stream right now. He's just sending me sending me photos of the beer he's drinking. I respect it. Yeah, we got a band 90 degree corners. Racer Rat puts it at an 8.7766540. I would have I would have put it at like a 9.8675309, but I like the number regardless. Um Sean puts it at a seven. Awood's thinking like an eight out of ten. Nine out of ten with no sand section sand section from Ox. Uh big shout out to XLR8 for no reason. Definitely a shout out to them. Accelerate, I'm guessing is how you're supposed to say that. Oh, Jesse with the follow. We got a big time on the screen right now, too. Up and coming sim team. Jeez, my my laundry right now is just making all kinds of noise. All right, got the 450 boys out there t laying in this one. Who are the big dogs? Well, Braden Carter's in this one. We know that. Jack Haley, Jeremy Siebel, Seth Shirley on the two. That that could be fun. Heat race between Shirley and Carter if they get up there and dice it up on the one and two. Back into our live screen and get ready to go racing for 450 heat number one in the city of brotherly love. Isn't that what Philly's called? I don't know all the nicknames of the cities. I know Chicago, we got the Windy City. Thought Philly was the city of brotherly love. I don't know. Where's all my Philly people up in here? Come on. Where you at? All right. Here we go. 30 car is sideways. We got all these guys down the inside line. Carter all the way inside. He's going to get pinched. But Donnie getting shoved out, and he's going to cause a huge pileup, and Carter's going to get the whole shot because of it. So gamesmanship there. Carter played it smart. Let everyone else go down into the first turn. And Carter is out front. Now, will he be gone? Because Seth Shirley went down in the first turn. I think that's Lang up in fourth. And yes, these guys are step on, step on, step off, quad, triple through this first rhythm section.
<laughs> There's nothing about Philly that screams brotherly love. No Bendis up in second early on. He's hopping through the whoops, man. Even the 450 guys are struggling a little bit. Bryce Whelan closing up in the three spot. Now putting the heat on him. Shirley is 14th as they run. Everyone jockeying for those positions on this first lap. This first turn is going to be treacherous tonight. I foresee some chaos in the main events. And Carter may have played it the best way he possibly can. Just let everyone else push wide. But then you run the risk because he's always going to get slightly out jumped and pinched. Run the risk of these guys shutting the door and making the turn. And yeah, look at every 450 guy. I knew that was going to be the line too. Sent uh, some hot laps to the Whiskey Throttle media people this week, so check them out. Uh, tomorrow, I believe they're having a pre-race support, and uh, you'll see some of my game laps on that as they preview the track. Jason Lawrence over there with David Pingree. And uh, I gave them a couple options. I tried to do some realistic lines, but I'm like, I'm telling you, I did a hot lap where I did that on, on, off quad, and I'm like, that's got to be the line. Everyone's going to do it. As Whelan makes the pass on Bendis. Lang, Heilman, Haley, Rogers, and Vial, who was up there, but he just tipped it over. He's now back to eighth, and Siebold is ninth. Rockfellow, 10th, O'Brien, 11th, Padani, 12th, Davis, 13th, and here is Seth Surly, your repeat 250 West champion in 14th. And if you think back to the showdown, Shirley gave himself a heck of a lot of work in the showdown. Oh, as a case of that triple right there. Don't know what it is about heat races of late, but Shirley has not been comfortable in them. Oh, and Shirley gets landed on by Anthony Pachone. Went for the quad and Shirley was not going for it. So tough break for the two machine. Well, it's Pachone because they kind of just misread each other's lines. Carter is out front cruising. 53-1 last time by. You know what? Let's go on board. Let's go on board with the champ and see this. Step over. The quad cases it and not grease it. So has to go double single here. And, man, he's just cooking right now. You just got to sit back and let him cook. He's going to go three right here. Three to this inside. Will he double after that? Nope. Going to go roll, roll, and double out. Carry speed to the outside in two, three, four, five on top of the whoops. Oh boy, going for a ride, heading into the Steve Mathis Memorial Nets. Gonna go around the berm and rejoin now with only a one second lead. So not getting away scot free just yet, but kudos to him because very good at knowing when the eject button is available and you don't need to try to make a corner if you can't make it. But now back to getting the quad and a little bit of a clip right there. These guys behind him are getting it seemingly cleaner. How about T-Lang creeping up here? So T-Lang I think goes over quad, quad two versus step on, on, off, quad three. And it seems to work. I mean, he's, he's definitely keeping it close here with Bendis on the 241 and going inside before the whoops. That inside line's coming together nicely in this 450 class. Oof, Lang rode the nose and then spun it around right in front of Whelan. Got a little bit tight there. So this battle for third will continue. We'll go back and see Pablo Vial there in fifth. John Heilman sixth, Jack Haley seventh. Johnny Padani, who basically caused the first turn pileup in eighth, and Jeremy Seabolt still holding on to ninth. All Rogers, surely, where is Rogers going? He was trying to jump into this inside rut, I guess, or off the roller. I don't, I don't even know what just happened. So that was a little bit odd. Uh, but Seth Shirley is 11th, and he's got a long ways to go to get to a transfer spot. He is. 9.4 seconds back of a transfer spot. He needs some luck. And look, yeah, over, quad, deep quad, almost five. What would you even do there? Uh, over five, four, one, over five, three, two. The 
but not making as many inroads towards the front as he would have hoped. But it's not over yet because look at this group that they're catching now. Vial and Padani, they maybe went down together because they are linked up. The two TSCZ KTMs now right in front of Caleb Hall who just went swapping through the tough blocks. And this is our fight for the final transfer spot. The sandwich is Vial. He's trying to jump by Padani. Now Padani's on the bubble and here comes Caleb Hall. We know Caleb Hall likes to make an aggressive pass or two. Oh, he's going to mess up a little bit though. And they've completely dropped Seth Shirley. And look at this. Hall's going to go quad double. I like that line, man. It's working. It might even be faster. He's all over Padani. So what happens here? White flag now waving for race leader Brayden Carter. We are watching Caleb Hall go to work on Johnny Padani for the final transfer spot. Going to funnel into that rut. They're all going to try to get up on top of the whoops. Oh, Caleb Hall is beautiful through there. So what happens? One lap to go. It's on. Padani defending inside. Over and triple for everybody right there. And three riders in the air together, but only two are in transfer spots. Where does Caleb Hall try to make this pass? So here we go. Over as Carter takes the win. And then he goes triple, or I should say quad. Doesn't get the quad again, so he doesn't get the option line right there. But he's going to tuck to the inside. Oh, it was close. Oh, what happens here? They're both going to go around Vial. Vial made a mistake. Didn't get the triple. Now Vial's fighting back. He's going to go off track and pass Caleb Hall from off the track. Hall's going to try to fight back to this inside line. It's going to come down to the whoops. Who gets the better drive? Hall on top. He's good through them, but down goes Padani. Hall makes the pass stick anyway, and Seth Shirley's going to go to the LCQ with a 10th place finish. Vial and Caleb Hall just snuck in. So that came all the way down to the end. As Seabolt made it, Shirley misses out by 1.2 seconds, at least for now. Anna Rogers got 11th, but Donnie, Parks, Rockefeller, Horn, Davis, Niles, Holm, Pachone, O'Brien. And Padani warmed his arm up and threw that one away. But Caleb Hall was going to pass the all anyway. So TSCZ was only going to have one bike going to the main. And in this case, it is Vial who's going through Padani to the LCQ. Penalties are in. And oh, Seth Shirley got so close. Only four tenths back as uh, Vial had two point five seconds of cuts, but Shirley had 1.8, so if Shirley had no cuts, he would have made it. But yeah, big winner in this one, Braden Carter, taking 450, heat number one. Alright, that was a good one. Good one to kick us off here tonight. I got, uh, who's messaging me? This guy... I'm just getting tagged and stuff on Discord right now. Anyway, good first heat. For the 450s, Carter makes it look easy on his way to trying to clinch the title here tonight. So, Colby Eagland is the man who can make it go another week with a solid result here tonight. Technically speaking, Alexis Leclerc could too, but it is more of a long shot. What do you guys think? I'll ask the, the chat room here. We got 160 people. Does Carter clinch tonight? Two rounds early. Or are we going all the way to Denver before he gets this thing done? Let me know. Jesse thinks we're going to Denver. Yeah, it makes it more interesting if we have it go another week for sure. But we'll see. So this one, yeah, it does feel a little bit more stacked, huh? Hayden Stevenson, Chase Blakely, Marchini, Vanderkoy, Hubbard, Nichols, Speck, Castellaneta, Young, Larson, Eaglin, Holt, Smith, Heckman, Sullivan, Enrico, Leclerc, Parker, Turley, Tharp in this one. does feel a little bit more on the stacked side. We saw Tharp, who won Foxborough, try to make the main event in Nashville and miss out. So because of that, we don't really know what to rank Tharp, but he did give this track a 10 out of 10. Seabold says he's stiff as fuck in third. 
Hubbard whole shot is very likely. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. Awood says it's over. T Dub thinks it's clinched as well. I'm thinking it might be over tonight too, but we'll see. Honestly, it would be fun to see Eaglin get a win. Extend this thing just a little bit further. RMX training facility wants their boy Alex to go. Who's Alex in this heat? Heckman. We got a Heckman fan up in here. All right, all right. Love the love the kits that Rico's been going with. The Snow Fear stuff absolutely slaps. Really good stuff. Yeah, and his uh, teammate Hayden Stevenson rocking the alternate stuff. Oh, can we get that back? One Industries is back. Can we get No Fear back? Oh my God, that would just be great. Uh, if Carter wins tonight and Eaglin finishes third or worse, then Carter clinches. There's also the opportunity that basically, he really just needs to outscore Eaglin by four points. So if he finishes second and Eaglin finishes fourth or worse, then he still clinches. Yes, uh, LeClaire is racing tonight. I saw him in this one. Where is he? There he is. All white, all right for Alexis LeClaire here tonight. All right. 450 heat number two. Catch the fever. Who's going to get that all important hole? Oh, yeah, we already know who it is. Jacob Hubbard, where you at? Going to get it done. Let's see. Right next to the box, gets a great jump. Hard on the brakes, he's gonna go deep. Let all the chaos ensue, and Leclerc's actually gonna get the whole shot. Let's see if Hubbard takes the lead into turn two. Leclerc is pushing him for it, and he's gonna let Leclerc have it. So Hubbard and Leclerc, one and two. Dooley's trialies, first lap, bringing Eaglin with them. All the heavy hitters up front. We got Eaglin up here, Castellaneta, who's won a couple races this year. Also at the sharp end of the field off the start. And we're seeing the mixed bag of lines right there. Leclerc went for the quad in the middle. These guys went for the over quad option. And Leclerc's fired up tonight. Over to Eaglin fighting it out for second. Marcini with a good start behind these guys in fifth. So we have got four Filski and Snowboard KTMs up front. Hubbard relinquishes second place. Colby Eaglin on the move into P2 for the 24th District Designs Honda. So at the end of lap one, it's Leclerc, Eaglin, Hubbard, Castellaneta, Marcini, Parker, Vanderkoy, Sullivan, and Nichols inside of the top nine transfer spots. Jeremy Smith down on lap one. He's dead last on the number four ride. So now it is up to Eaglin to try to inch closer. So there it is. Over. And then quad double. And Leclerc just made a big mistake at the end of that rhythm section. And Eaglin ripped that corner, ripped that triple. Castellaneta's putting the heat on Hubbard as well. Teammates starting to fight it out for third. Hubbard has not had that same early race intensity. And I think it might just be a little bit of him trying to corral himself. Because he used to be a little bit Hail Mary early in the race kind of like Kenny Roxon was at Nashville, just going for it. But uh, Hubbard's been a little bit better about settling and trying to get a race pace going. Almost got him the win at Foxborough because of that. Oh, wow, Eaglin. OJ to flat and instant legs off crash. I haven't seen one of those from these top guys in a while. They're all pretty good about landing in the right area of the machine to not have that. Usually if you land both tires on the ground at the exact same time, that's when you get the hardest. It's so stupid, but that's where you get kind of the hardest push on the feet. And if that happens, you can immediately have a legs off crash. So settling in, we got Hubbard jumping the whoops. His coach and mentor, Max Voland, is not going to be thrilled with that concept. As Marcini has now slid into the three spot. So who did we lose up here? Obviously we lost Eaglin. Where did Castellaneta go? He just went down. Yeah, he's back here with Eaglin. So Castellaneta on the 22 having a bit of a tough one. Not as tough as Eaglin though, because he got up in front of him, even though he was behind him before they both crashed. And 
uh, this is our final transfer spot right now. Brandon Larson on the outside looking in. And I'm actually pretty surprised how many people have switched to this line. It does seem like it's preferred because you can tuck to this inside right here. Luke Sullivan picking it up from a crash. More duallys. Man, I miss that Awood's not here. We've got so many duallys opportunities here tonight. Let me uh, make it happen real quick. We'll go in here. And look, it's like Awood's actually here the whole time. Oh, duallys! Miss you, buddy. Back to the lead. We got a battle brewing. Hubbard has inched up on Leclerc. And Leclerc, look at even cutting low in the berm right there. So now we get a good indication here. Well, Hubbard's not going to get the quad. We do not get the best indication. Leclerc's even tripling and trying to stick that inside. Triple, roll, roll, double. Seems to be the option through that kind of turning roller section. And yeah, Hubbard's jumping the whoops. Uh, what do we think about this, Phil's team? Are we on board with the jump in the whoops? It's kind of working. There's just uh Cruiser. A little deep on that triple. So Hubbard, Marcini, and now Spencer Turley has found his way into the four spot. Ahead of Eaglin, Sullivan, Castellaneta, Parker, and Nichols. Let's go back to this transfer spot battle because it's looking good. Stevenson, Belars, Alex Heckman. Tyler Nichols is in the final transfer spot, but it seems like it might be on. If these guys can inch up a little bit to him. A quad, quad. Double. And Stevenson wants to inch closer. That's going to help. Nichols a mistake, and Stevenson now can sense an opportunity. That inside line, Nichols really good on top of those whoops. Stevenson bouncing a little bit, but didn't lose too much time in the process. We have not eclipsed the six minute mark just yet. So I think there's going to be two to go for these guys. And Stevenson made a mistake. Larson going to go by. And Heckman's getting in the mix as well. That's not going to help any of them. Oh, Stevenson down. Scrubbed too hard. Probably had the suspension G out as he went to lay it over. And just down he went. So there goes Jason. I, I mean, Chase Blakely. Stevenson just somehow saved that. I don't know how he didn't crash. Parker, Castellaneta, Eaglin. And Sullivan now trying to reel in Turley on this last lap. And Marcini putting Hayden Speck down. And whoa, change for the lead on the last lap. Hubbard's out front. So Hubbo on top in the final stretch of this one. We talked about him trying to find that consistency. Getting the quad quad and double to the inside there. Winging out, cutting underneath, tripling in, tripling again into the rollers, and then roll, roll, double out. Charge across the start, and tuck to this inside. Into the whoops one more time, skipping a little bit, but it's going to be Jacob Hubbard, your Heat 2 winner, here in Philadelphia. Leclerc second, Marcini will pick up third. Turley gets fourth, and Sullivan rounds out our top five. Eaglin has to settle for sixth. Castellaneta seventh. Parker eighth, and Nichols, barring a crash, will make it through. Yeah, he's tiptoeing. So Tyler Nichols goes to the main event in ninth. Everybody else behind him going to the LCQ. That was one of the best heat races for Heckman in a while, so kudos to him, but not close enough. Larson, Blakely, Stevenson, Vanderkoy, Tharp, Holt, Rico, Smith. Terrible heat race for Smith, Young, and Speck all going to the last chance qualifier. There we go. Penalties 
are in. Like, England jumped all the way to fifth on penalties, so some guys getting shuffled around. But Nichols does indeed hold on for the final spot. Same top nine in, same 10 through 20 going to the LCQ. That is our 450 heat race is done and dusted. Up next, last chance qualifiers. Your last chance to make it into the main events. This will be fun. Welcome back in studio. Hanging out with you guys, Calum Brower in the booth by myself. Anybody got some fun questions we can debate real quick before we get ready for these LCQs? Hey, Leclerc is like French or something. Uh, asks MXBLP. Yes, Leclerc is French or something. We don't know what the other something is, but he is French, indeed. Andy Hack? Andy Hack 310 followed? What? Talk about OGs. Oh, People still be using that Andy Hack KTM like it's hotcakes. Um, let's see. <laughs> Tharp says I won a main and I guess I'm never making a main again. <laughs> Tough. We'll see him in the LCQ. Is Leclerc an edge or a gooner? I think he's a hole shotter. Do you think Ken should leave Suzuki? Uh, I don't know. He made that bike really, really good this past year. Like, uh, they made a lot of progress with it. I think it was a freak deal with the shock this weekend. So I don't think you can say like, well, it's Suzuki. Um, obviously that didn't happen to the KTM or the Yamaha or the Honda. I think those are the only guys that were actually tripling into the whoops, but I don't think it would change much. Like if you put, if you put Kenny on a Yamaha, for example, is he a title contender suddenly? Does it change? I don't know. And if he's on a star Yamaha, they wouldn't let him do WSX, so it doesn't matter. Sex and throttle stuck or D-class moment. Debated this on the uh, EVS Sports LVK More Than Moto podcast. Check it out on the Steve Mathis Podcast Network. Myself and Lewis Phillips arguing about stuff. Uh, we debated whether or not it was a malfunction or just a brain fart. We leaned malfunction because of Chase Sexton. Like he's not the type of guy that would have that happen. I lean on, I don't think it cracked the throttle body and that's why it stuck wide open. But I do think that maybe a rock hit the throttle housing, something like that. And just a momentary throttle blip because it wasn't wide open when he was in the air. But you don't see like a lurch forward in a weird position out of someone like Chase Sexton like that. It just doesn't happen. The only thing I could see that would make it a potential like rider error is that section they were all going through braking bumps and then jumping off of that single. So maybe like a little bit of a lurch and then grab the throttle by mistake. But I still see it, man. I, I think it would be a bike problem. And honestly, kudos to KTM for jumping right in front of it and saying like, yeah, it was a malfunction. Uh, they blamed a rock, but I mean, it was their bike that did it. So. Back in for this LCQ. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't hear that Kenny Shock was a prototype. They were only three hours into using that particular Shock body, as he posted about. I don't, I don't know. Kenny experiments with suspension probably more than anybody else as a pro. Uh, enough that he hired his own suspension guy. The team had a guy, but Kenny's like, no, I'm going to hire my own guy. You know, he, he he wiggles around a lot with suspension setups. So I guess it could, you know, I, I could see it. All right, last chance qualifier time. You guys got your favorite beverage. Because I would sit back and strap in, take a few good sips of it. Because this is going to be fun. Only four riders go to the main event. Everybody else heads home early. Joey Carter ripped the start in the heat. Does he do it again? We're off and running. 
250 LCQ. Carter with a good jump. He's going to try to close the door on Partolo. Whoa, going deep was the 614 ride. And that looks like it was Cody Branson who went in a little bit too far. Partolo gets out front. And just like Carter saw in his heat race, it's another Rainbow Six Siege Husqvarna in front of him. But this time it's Partolo. His heat, it was Seth Carr. Carter going to triple to the outside. Partolo tucks inside. And they even out just a little bit. All hydrate thanks to Oxygoon, Oxygon. Thanks for the hydration little bit there. All right, so early on, it's Partolo, Carter, Gatlin, Will Now. Will Now is making the pass. Oh, down is Partolo. Partolo is down at the end of the whoops. Looks like Jeff Cooper and Justin Silvis also went down. So that will change it up a little bit. Carter from Now, Gatlin, and Cole Betts in the final transfer spot. Michael Mudge on the 716 right behind him. And uh, it was not Jeff Cooper, excuse me. Justin Silvis on the 417 was down, and Gatlin got landed on by Cole Betts, but Betts is the one who hits the deck. So let's reset it again. Carter starting to cruise out front, goes for the quad and gets it. Will now also getting the quad. Michael Mudge not going for the quad. Triple to the inside, and then Gatlin right there. Jeff Cooper is inching up. This is your battle for the final transfer spot right here, folks. Jeff Cooper and Jack Gatlin going at it right behind Michael Mudge. All right, so we're back to the action. It's Carter from Mudge, now and Gatland. As we settle in the top four positions here. And Partolo right behind these guys, trying to inch back into the battle. Gafford also closing in from sixth. You can see Parlo inching up on Gatland as well as they go by the mechanics area. Oh, and that's Will now going down out of third. So Parlo is going to get gifted the spot, but Gafford's coming with him. Oh, Gafford disappears. He's out of here. So it's Carter from... Oh, Mudge is down out of second now. So Gatlin's going to go by Partolo through. And there goes Jeff Cooper. Now down the inside of Gafford into the final transfer spot. And the battle is still on. Now Cooper dealing with Gafford putting the pressure on. And if these guys go down, there's still a freight train of riders behind them as Partolo swapping in the whoops, but I think he made it through. He did. Gatlin is right behind him. Oh, Cooper almost into the back of Gatlin right there through the first turn. If you're Cooper here, you don't want to get too close to Gafford. Oh, look at this. He's going to quad up and go to the inside. Let's see if he makes it stick. Like you can see, I think he even checked up a little bit harder to make sure he wouldn't pull up even with Gatlin. Because now he's got a gap. Cole Betts is just hitting the triple. So if you're Cooper here, you don't need to force the issue and necessarily pass Gatlin, but stick close as Joey Carter still leads this race and they are going to have two to go. Oh, Partolo going around Novak, I think that was. And there's Gatlin forced out and Cooper makes the pass stick. Gatlin's on the bubble for the final transfer spot. Who's that? Uh, that was a lapper stuck in the berm. Okay, thought it was maybe one of our leaders. 
as Jeff Cooper continues to hit that quad. So our top four have kind of broken away. Cole Betts is just trying to get back up here. Ryan Chousey also coming with him. As the white flag now waves for Carter out front. We haven't talked much about him because he's just been cruising, making it look easy. Oh, slide through the corner. Partolo, Cooper, and Gatlin still in the transfer spots. Uh, Cole Betts is inching up, man. This is getting tight. 55-9. Gatlin, 58-3 last time by. So he lost two and a half seconds, and Cole Betts can definitely see him now. And he's absolutely being pushed by Ryan Chousey. Over table, uh, a little bit short, so not going to get the quad. Chousey will. And my double pass, Cole Betts. Oh, they almost come to blows. And they're all over Gatlin. Betts has to just back out of the challenge. Oh, Gatlin had this come so fast to him, and they get together. Chelsea off the track. Betts goes by, and Carter was down in the whoops. Partolo gets the win. They're bouncing. They're both down, and staying up on two wheels is Cole Betts, I think. But Gatlin's going to go back by them both and get into the main event. So Gatlin absolutely warmed his arm up to throw it away, and he still gets in anyway. Oh, my goodness. The game did not like me right there as I was trying to switch those positions, but Gatlin makes it in. Chousey goes down and brings Betts with him. Betts stayed up, but it wasn't enough to make it. It's close enough that we'll have to see if cuts change anything, but it's Partolo taking the win from Cooper, Carter, and Gatlin unofficially. Oh, Cole Betts is going to be pissed if he doesn't make it because he was trying to size up a pass on Chelsea, then Chelsea just brought him to the deck with him. So let's see. We got one rider still to finish, and we'll get those penalties to see whether or not it's Gatlin. Uh, and it, it is Gatlin. Oh, by a tenth of a second, Jack Gatlin makes it. So Gatlin had 1.4 seconds of cuts. Betts had none. Literally, if he had just gotten up a slight bit faster, he'd be in. But Gatlin goes through. So it's Gatlin, Joey Carter, Jeff Cooper, and Austin Partolo going to the main event. <clears throat> wow. All right, 450 LCQ coming up next. 250 LCQ delivered. And we'll get back to our intermission screen. Yeah, if you're if you're Cole Betts right now, you are like, what the heck, man? That was mine. All right, back in studio with you guys, getting ready to go racing 450 last chance qualifier. Don't know how to say qualifier, apparently. Qualifier coming up. Uh, we got Smith, Parks, Heckman, Blakely, Stevenson, Rogers, Larson, Tharp, Shirley, Arico, Holm, Pachone, Horn, Niles, Davis, O'Brien, Holt, Vanderkoy, Padani, Young, Speck, and Rockefeller in this one. Man, a lot of big names. If you're Tanner Rogers, Hayden Stevenson, Braden Tharp, Jeremy Smith, Pachone, Holt, uh, Holm, Horn, Vander Coy, and obviously Seth Shirley. These are all names. Davis, Padani. These are names we see in main events every week. So these guys not maybe uh, making it in would be tough look for sure. We'll see what happens though. Thanks, Splacks. Splask. Above average EA skate thinks B Lars for the dub. So does Latrix.
Cole the man is done with this game. I'm assuming that's Cole Betts now joining us in the chat room. That's a tough look. Oh, Andy Hack, you're so nice. Thank you, sir. Yeah, redemption from the heat race, for sure. Uh, battle to keep an eye on in the 250s is fifth between Hollenbeck and Cooper. Five points between them. Yeah, I knew Hollenbeck was battling for a top five. So that'll be a that'll be fun. What what you sometimes miss out with these battles too is like I never got a top five in a series except for the last series I ever raced, which was 250 East in 2017, and I got fourth. But I was in third going into the final round, and I was like pissed off that I didn't keep third. But I lost a top five in the standings in 2014 in outdoors by a two points to Tyson Fresquez. I would have been fifth in points in 450s. And it was like, ah, oh, grinding my gears to my core that I didn't get those two points. So, you know, you may think, whatever, fifth in the points, who cares? But some of these guys, like, it, it actually does mean a lot. Like, if I could have gotten fifth that year, I think it was, like, Leclerc, Dupuis, T-Crane, Shipley, and then Fresquez me or something like that. So it was, like, all these legends of the game, and I would have been top five if they stood up with them. So, Yeah bums me out to this day I didn't get that ended up sixth in the points by two but almost all right back to the action we go though All right, here we go, folks. Top four of the main event. Everybody else going home early. And the 250 last chance qualifier just provided us with some fun action all the way to the checkered flag. So are we going to see it in the 451? We're about to find out. 30 cards sideways. Revs are up. And the gate is down in the 450 LCQ. Drag race to turn one. 23 gets there first. I think that's Tharp, but he's going to get pushed out. A couple guys going deep, and it's Tanner Rogers who comes out with the lead. Stevenson on the 12 is right there as well. Padani on the 26. This time, didn't get hung up with anybody. I think it's Holtzy in fourth as they all scrub off the triple on lap one, but it's Rogers out front on the Phil Ski and Snowboard number 55. A couple different option lines. Padani does not get the preferred one, and Holtzy and Shirley trying to get him. Ah, Padani... Shirley pushed him out, but somehow they both stayed up. And Shirley cases the triple right in front of him, and B. Lars snuck through to get up into fourth with all that going on. Go through the rollers, but Donnie gets Shirley back, maybe? Pushed him out a little bit. And Shirley's going to tuck inside and try to hold the spot. Padani, great run in the whoops. Oh, many guys down. Everybody's off the bike. As Rogers was down, that took Holtzy and B. Lars with Shirley also hitting the deck. And Shirley's now got a load of work to do. As this entire group gets pummeled, I think Holtzy went down twice as Hayden Stevenson takes over the lead. So that all started when Tanner Rogers went down out front. And now Stevenson takes over the race lead, but Donnie up in the second. Rogers got it up still in third. And Niles now in the four spot on the 74. Speaking of the four, here is JS4, Jeremy Smith, closing up behind him. He's bringing Chase Blakely with him. Seth Shirley is eighth. He just passed Evan Vanderkoy. They're on the triple behind this group. Oh, Niles sliding into the corner. He's pushing. I'll get up onto the whoops pretty well. Nothing yet for Jeremy Smith to make a pass or anything along those lines. Actually, Smith just made a mistake. Here comes Blakely. Thought about an inside move. Smith gave him plenty of room. He goes step on, off, and two. And Blakely with the three into the corner. Going to be right there. Squares it off beautifully. Dooleys. And Smith gets it right back into the next turn. Here's our option line. So let's see. Well, Smith is not going to get the quad. Blakely does. And it honestly was pretty even with that line. Stevenson down with the race lead. So that puts Blakely into the final transfer spot. 
Whoa, and Blakely tees up JS4 and puts Niles on the deck as well. Stevenson down again off the side of the track as Smith jumps back on. Here comes Vanderkoy mixing it up. So it's Rogers, Padani, Tharp, Larson as Blakely loops out onto the start straight. Vanderkoy just passed JS4. Here's our final transfer spot. Brandon Larson now. Man, oh man, that kicked off. So let's reset it. Rogers leads again from Padani. Tharp is now into third. And Larson is in fourth. Now can Larson hold off some of the best in the game? As Jeremy Smith and Seth Shirley inch up into this battle, Evan Vanderkoy right behind Brandon Larson. Here's Vanderkoy, a little bit deep. JS4 double to the inside, trying to make a pass on Vanderkoy. Not quite just yet. Vanderkoy shorts the triple. JS4 went a little long. And Shirley is lurking there on the two. Crazy to see single digit guys in an LCQ and not in transfer spot too. Whoops, Vanderkoy up on top of him clean. This isn't even for a transfer yet. But it is getting a little bit closer now with B-Lars right in front of these guys. Vanderkoy, a mistake. Is that the opportunity for Smith? He's going to swoop the corner and step on, step off. Nah, not going to work. And Shirley's going to pass him because of it. So Shirley up to six now, right behind Vanderkoy as they all... Lay it over off that triple. Look at this three rider train. Oh, Shirley almost into the back of Vanderkoy. Smith has to jump off the track. No, he does not. Did he quad? He does. Is he gonna square off the corner? Whoa, that's Tharp. Getting back on the track right in front of these guys as Vanderkoy goes a little bit long. And they're gonna have two laps to go this time by. Oh, Tharp and Vanderkoy together. Smith goes by. So now Smith into the final transfer spot. As Tharp swings wide, Vanderkoy down the inside, almost made a pass. But Shirley is now knocking on the door of Jeremy Smith to try to make this main event. And Smith, he's always so consistent and tough to actually pass. Shirley did it once, does he do it again? Scrubs off the triple, Shirley a little bit tidier. And lines, let's see, over, quad, like both quad, yep, Smith went for it, Shirley got it cleaner, he's right there on him, oh, let's see if this is the move right here, Smith off the track, and Shirley gets it easily in the end, but you know JS4 is going to fight back, he might fight back right now, down the inside, what a beautiful pass by Jeremy Smith on the four, defensive inside line into corner before the whoops. White flag is waving for Padani out front. Shirley's hopping the whoops. Padani, no, was down, and now they're side by side. Third, fourth, and fifth over the finish line jump together. Smith is going to try to slingshot the corner and get Padani, and he's going to get down the inside to make the pass into third, and then lose the front end and go down. Oh, he had the pass and pushed a little too deep. So now Shirley's on the bubble with Tharp right behind him. Larson, Rogers, Padani, Shirley, our front four. Tharp is all over, and who is that down? Not one of our transfer spots. Early. Oh, Padani's down with Tharp and going over them. Tharp down and disconnects immediately. It's over. So Larson and D. Davis here now. So it's Rogers, Shirley, Padani, Larson, and Davis for the final transfer spot suddenly. And Smith is still right behind them. You see the four. Lurking, he is going to get Devin Davis into this corner. He's got to hail Mary the whoops. Larson on top of him gets through them clean. Brandon Larson goes to the main event into Philly. JS4 down in the last turn. Home down as well. Davis also down. Good grief, that was chaos. And in the end, it's Rogers who picks up the win. Shirley ends up getting all the way to second. Donnie third and Larson fourth. They cross the finish line with Shirley, Smith, and uh, Padani all side by side. Padani and Shirley make it in. Smith does not. Neither does Brayton Tharp. <coughs> oh my goodness. Well, the LCQs did not disappoint tonight. That is for sure. 
We're still waiting for some penalties to roll in here. Just to confirm it, I mean, it's a big gap back to Vanderkoy in fifth. Yeah, and it does not change whatsoever. Rogers, Shirley, Padani, Larson, the top four to the main event out of the last chance qualifier. All right, 250 main coming up. And we'll jump back in studio with you boys. Preview what's about to happen. Seth Shirley versus Brand, uh, excuse me, uh, Seth Carr. Not Seth Shirley. Seth Carr versus Rasmus Balzer. Getting tripped up with all these mixed names that I just named. Uh, Balzer versus Seth Carr. Four points between them in this East title fight. Back scratcher. I don't know if I'll make a bikes team again. Honestly, um, if I do, it would literally just be like all my friends, which kind of is the sim team. Uh, friends with Alex, friends with Jeremy, friends with Ethan, Colton. They're all like my friends, I would consider. I think what happened with our MX bikes team uh, was that we just had too many people that wanted to join to either be a part of like the big brand or for skins. And we just had a bunch of people randomly leave instead of, uh, you know, us try to help them make better or whatever it is they're complaining about. So I would just do it with uh, people that are close to me that I know are not going to randomly leave basically. Cause I was super annoying trying to work my real job and then dealing with people leaving and yeah, not fun. So If it comes back, that's what it would be. Honestly, I'm more thinking about, um, since I can't stream any of these bikes races cause they're all Friday or the weekend or whatever. And I'm like this week, I will be in Philadelphia on Friday night, for example. Um, I might just sponsor the series and, uh, see how that goes, uh, be involved that way since I can't really stream or do anything media wise with it, just, uh, sponsor the series and hopefully make things a little bit better. that way, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to, I would really love to stream the ARL races, but 90% of the races I'm not home for, uh, you know, if they raced Tuesday night, I could do some of them, not all of them, but some if they raced Thursday night. I could do a few Friday is like by far the worst day because by that point, I've totally switched into journalism mode and doing my job covering the sport in the media. So I just, I don't have any time. I would sometimes watch the races from my hotel room, but that's about it. Yeah, race series recap would be cool, but again, then I would have to be really, really close to the series to know exactly what's going on and why things happen and stuff like that. I could definitely do it for Sim. Maybe that's something I'll, I'll consider. All right, let's jump back in and get ready for this 250 main event. Seth Carr versus Rasmus Balzer. Jack Mark also won his heat race. Bartolo, there is Balzer. Seth Carr won his heat, but Balzer had a rough go of it. So for our Design Lab Co, a whole shot pick tonight. I'm going to go Seth Carr because he looked good in his heat. He's got a good gate pick. I think he'll sneak down the inside and get this thing done. Head over to thedesignlabco.com. Check out some sweet graphics by Nick Porter. sorrow has got Chris Young for the whole shot. Get our timer ready to go in this one. 15 minutes plus a lap for what is round eight of 250 Supercross East. We are revved up. We are ready to go for the first time in 40 years. Supercross is in Philadelphia, and it's time for a battle royale in the 250 East main event. Here we go. 
Walzer's going to get to the corner first. Down the inside, it's Rogan McIntosh who gets the Design Lab Co. Pole shot award, but Walzer is going to take the lead into turn two and put McIntosh on the ground by doing it. Joey Carter's up in second place early on. Did Seth Carr sneak through? I think he's in fourth. Yeah, he's in actually fifth behind Partolo. Oh, Balzer almost through the front door. Carter's trying to take the race lead. Down the inside. He gets into Balzer. They both are down as Balzer is down off the track. There goes Carr through. This is huge for championship implications. Balzer left the door wide open on the first lap. And Carter tried to take advantage. But he just didn't get there in time and they came together. New race leader, Nick Thomasunas at the end of lap one. He's got Partolo from the LCQ right behind him and then Carr's in third. Partolo thinking inside, trying to get Nicky T for the race lead, but it's not just gonna happen yet. And Nicky T was good in his heat, fought for a long time. Almost won it. Ah, that's going to be a mistake. And there goes Partolo into the lead. Partolo trying to triple to this inside and make it work. Decently so. Now Carr's just hanging out. And right now, Balzer is ninth. So not too, too bad. Especially from where we've seen Balzer before. He's been 17th, 18th, gotten back to podium positions. When you start out front, you finally hole shot, which has been a minute for Balzer. Gosh, he's going to be pissed off. He's now up to eighth, just got around Chris Young, and actually got Fowler into seventh as well as we continue to watch the fight for the race lead. So Seth Carr in third, Gatlin fourth, Schiabro fifth, and Balzer now into sixth. He's made good progress. If anything, he's going to start riding pissed off. That could help him maybe get into this fight a little bit quicker by riding that aggression and just feeding off the adrenaline that comes with it. Fight for the lead is opened up ever so slightly, but that's because Nick Thomasunas has dropped back to third, and here comes Seth Carr on his teammate. It's a rainbow six, one, two. And this is a golden opportunity for Seth Carr and it also is a massive help that he has his teammate up here because obviously his teammate is going to try to buffer as much as he can if Carr takes over the race lead you'd have to imagine Partolo is not going to let Bowser get up there ooh that's not going to work and Carr goes down whoa this is a shake up Easy section to do it too, and Thomas Sunis goes by, Gatlin goes by, and now they're side by side. Balzer had to check up to not hit him. And speaking of teammates, here comes Schiabro, who's going to swing wide and let Balzer go through. So now the championship rivals battling it out here for fourth. Early in the main event, we still have 11 and a half minutes plus a lap to go. And if it ends this way, Balzer would retain the championship lead by three points going into Salt Lake City. Thomas Sunis goes down. They're up to third and fourth, respectively, right behind Gatland, who just barely made it in out of the LCQ. We got two LCQ guys, one, two right now. Partolo and Gatland mixing it up up here. Oh, Balzer is pushing Seth Carr. And that comfortable gap that Carr had early in the race is gone. They now both had a crash. Carr's had to really seat bounce that one. Neither of them are going to go for the quad. Carr is trying to check up and block the inside line. Got right up behind Gatlin, who just got upside down on that triple. Carr wants to make this pass in a hurry. Not going to triple in right there. And Balzer triples to the outside. Going to try to square back off and make this pass. Doubles to the inside. And Carr has to check completely up. Not to get front end lock and fall. Schiabro is now going to force the envelope down the inside. Doesn't give him the business, though. Played respectfully there. Nice job to not get involved. And Balzer, with a beautiful pass, has moved up to third. Carr forces the issue to pass him back and gets it. Oh, my gosh, what a fight. This is what we wanted to see out of the championship rivals. 
Where did that send come from? And he still actually made the inside line. They have now dropped off of Gatlin a little bit because of this fight amongst each other. Either of them quad up right there again. And now they're jumping to the outside. So just slingshotting to get the speed. Parlow, by the way, gone at the front of the field. I think he's about seven seconds out front. And we are just watching this title fight unfold in front of our eyes. Seth Carr wants to get around Gatlin now. After forcing his way back by Balzer, he's got to run in the whoops. Inside, move. Gatlin squares off and puts Balzer on the ground. I think Balzer, yep, Schiavo's going to let him go. He picks it up still in fourth. That was just Gatlin reacting to Carr, not realizing how close Balzer would be here. And Balzer really nowhere to go, exiting the whoops right there. They got Schiavo fighting it out with Thomas Sunis. As the R6 teammates are 1-2 once again, but Partolo is uh, putting some time on the field here. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I have my timing and scoring screen. He's got nine seconds on his teammate. Obviously, he wants to win this race, but also doesn't want to fall by the wayside and potentially helping his teammate, maybe? I don't know. Balls are all over Jack Gatlin now for third place. Down the inside into the whoops. Up on top. Balls are inside. Gatlin squares off. Very similar to what happened last lap, but no one close enough, obviously, to hit Gatlin this time. And Balzer takes over third place. So now the race is on. See what happens between Carr and Balzer. Three seconds in it between them. As we approach the halfway mark of this race. Lap traffic coming into play. I believe this is Mortberg on the 181. Seth Carr is trying to figure out a way by. Ortberg just going to get out of the way. Very nicely done. Pulls off to the inside and dams on the brakes. Let's the 15 machine go. Mortberg is in Wiley and the whoops almost gets into the back of Seth Carr. And then you got Balzer still back here trying to inch up. So now there's seven seconds off of Partolo in the lead who just ran a 57-3. And there is a lot of lap traffic about to be involved here. He is now right behind Trent Adams, I believe this is, on the 80 or the 63, I should say. And more lap traffic coming up the road of that. So Seth Carr is going to have to deal with this same lap traffic. That time he goes quad double. Cleanly so. Balzer and Carr both in the 54s last time by. In fact, they almost ran identical lap times. Nobody else was in the 55s except Jeremy Schiabro, and everyone else was 56 or worse. So that just shows the lap times these guys are starting to put down as they inch closer to Partolo. 7.9 seconds to gap. McIntosh and Joey Carter just came together right in front of Partolo, and they both went down. Carr has to avoid the 75 of Liam Atkinson through that inside line, making a mistake. And, ooh, Balzer, he must have gone down at the end of the whoops because Gatlin's back by him. And Balzer has slipped to fourth. If it ends as is right now, we have a dead tie top the championship standings with the, only the showdown left to go. You're Seth Carr at this point. You're just like, all right, settle in. Don't make the big mistakes. Your teammate goes and wins. Your teammate goes and wins. It is what it is. But you're gaining championship points. And even if he makes it just two points between them going into the final round, that's still huge because it really is whoever beats who at the final race. And Balzer's got to be careful here because he could... Ball even further down the order if he makes another big mistake. He's uh, only five seconds ahead of Thomas Sunis and Jeff Cooper. Oh, lap traffic. Oh, Gatlin got into McIntosh and off the bike he goes. Now Thomas Sunis into Gatlin. That's a free spot for Balzer, but he also laid it down. So these guys are, oh, and Balzer's stuck. And he hits Gatlin and he's down. Thomas Sunis is stuck on him. 
Gatlin has to back up to not hit Thomas Sunis, and there is Schiabro going by as Bowser falls to seventh. And Schiabro just says, I'm out of the way, man. Letting people go by at this point. Schiabro went from seventh or sixth to tenth right there because he just let his teammate go. And everything he can to be a team player in this situation as the R6 boys are gone at the front of the field and Balzer's fighting for his championship lead at this point. Jeff Cooper has taken over third place. He's just in front of Thomas Sunis and Gatlin in the whoops as Balzer down the inside repasses Gatlin to get in the top five. Oh, makes a mistake. Gatlin gets him back. Balzer's trying to drag race him into the corner and gets it and just makes the rut. seems that the win is out of the question to break the all-time record again. We thought it might happen in Nashville with either Balzer or Shirley. Neither of them got it done. And now Balzer's just trying to fight to hold the championship lead. Forget about the wins record as he battles Thomas Sunis. Oh, gets into him. Gatlin goes back by and there's Jared Gummison on the 77 now passing him. So Balzer forces the issue and it doesn't work. Tom Quineau just got hit from behind by Jack Mark, but these guys are all in the mix as Balzer is struggling here. Oh, Gatlin down and hits him. He stays up and goes around Thomas Sunis. And now he's bar to bar over the finish with uh, Gummison, I should say, in a fight for fourth. Jeff Cooper has left these guys in third. He's 10 seconds up the track. On the inside, oh, Gummison gets hit from behind. Dooleys. And Balzer takes over fourth place. Again, we are back to a provisional dead heat atop the standings as it runs. And the win record is all-time 250 Supercross wins. Rasmus Balzer, Jeremy Smith, Seth Shirley all on 10 each. It's a dead tie for the all-time 250 Supercross wins record between them. And oh my gosh, Balzer, it's falling apart here. McIntosh just gets out of the way. But no, almost gets into the side of him as they go by Mortberg, I think, who was down. Oh my gosh, Balzer barely saved that one. At this point, we're just trying to see if Balzer can wrestle it back together here. It's not good, but he's still sixth. He's still sixth, and right now I believe only two points back as it sits. By the way, Seth Carr is now only seven seconds off his race-leading teammate as Balzer just made another big mistake in this rhythm section. He's got to get Quino and Gummison. They're in front of him. There's Quino, there's Gummison. Gummison just almost tripled on the back of Alec Horn right there. Or, excuse me, Zellner. Whoa, Gummison, slide out. Weird spot. And that will benefit Balzer, not quite. Balzer did get Quino. Oh, and then Gummison goes down. Balzer almost goes over the bars. Quino front flips to death. And Balzer retakes fourth place. He's 12 seconds behind Jeff Cooper. So it seems unlikely he will get him. So Seth Carr now is just trying to put quality laps down to get to his teammate who's in the lead, but he's off the track. One minute and a lap left on the clock. We might have three to go still, and Seth Carr is trying his hardest to win this race because he could re or he could overtake Balzer for the championship lead with a race win right here, right now. Partlow has been so good. The lap traffic is not helping either of them. Oh, Rasmus down again, and he's back to seventh now. He's on the verge of may, maybe even being lapped here. If I can see the one, this is Thomas Sunis that these guys are right behind and Balzer's only about five seconds up the track of that. Arlo is fighting for his life and he's having to work through so many riders. This is, oh my God, what's happening? Still five seconds on the clock. As he weaves through Schiabro, 
and Thomas Sunis and Jack Mark, Joey Carter, Quino, Zellner, so many riders. There's two or three guys laps down and Portolo's down with the race lead. And there goes Seth Carr taking it over. He jumps off the track. There are so many riders mixed up here as Balzer's now back into the top five and now Seth Carr gets into riders. Partolo lands and he gets into them as well. But now Carr's leading, he's trying to get around Gatland and he hits Gatland and goes down, but he's still on the bike. Here comes Partolo. White flag in the air next time by for the teammates. At this point, man, you just got to hope they don't go down too much and Jeff Cooper gets involved here. Partolo's made him another mistake. He's three seconds off. Seth Carr trying to avoid some downed riders. He got a pile up. That's Gatland. And now Joey Carter's right in front of him as he takes the white flag. He's being uber safe. As Partolo is just desperate to get these lappers out of the way. Nobody's moving. Gatland's not moving. Carter's not moving. Thomas Sunis is not moving. They're all making life super difficult for the 52 ride here. And Seth Carr has some breathing room. God, Partolo got screwed right there. So many guys right there in that first turn. And then I, I didn't see who it was that went down, but whoever went down right in front of him brought him with. Oh, Carr just made a mistake. It's going in front of Thomas Sunis. He's sliding a little bit. Partolo is right there. So what happens into the whoops? Thomas Sunis is right there. Carr on top. Partolo sent it, but he's going to fall short. Seth Carr wins in Philly. Nine tenths of a second over his teammate, who is going to be fuming at these lappers. Big shout out to Jeff Cooper who did a tremendous job to land on the box here tonight through all of the chaos. And Cooper gets a podium in Philly. Hollenbeck is trying to hold off Balzer with one turn to go for fourth. Into the whoops, Balzer sending. Hollenbeck's just trying to survive. Last turn, Hollenbeck runs him high and takes him down. Hollenbeck gets fourth. Is that gonna cost him another spot to Balzer? Schiavro setting it on Jack Mark to make sure he doesn't get the spot and Balzer crosses in fifth. Holy smokes. Schiavro, Jack Mark, Gummison, Thomas Sunis, and Gatland was your top 10. Unofficially, Seth Carr does not get the win. It is gonna go to Partolo. Three seconds of cuts, four seconds of cuts for Seth Carr. And he slides to second. Partolo gets the dub in Philly. Oh my goodness. So unofficially, Seth Carr takes the championship lead by one point, I believe. One point over Balzer with that second to fifth split. Jesus, what a race. And Partolo takes the win here tonight in Philly. Cooper gets on the podium. Balzer disconnects immediately. He's pissed off. Gosh, what a race. Well, we are set up for one heck of a showdown in 250 East going into the final race of the year between Balzer and Carr. And neither of them get the win tonight. Crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. Now, we switch gears from a ridiculous championship fight to what could be the conclusion of a championship here tonight in the 450 class. Braden Carter, 48 points up on Kobe Eaglin, 64 points up on Alexis Leclerc. Three rounds to go. Needs to leave here tonight. 52 points up on everybody to be crowned Moto Option Supercross champion for the fourth consecutive time. No one's ever won four in a row. Indoors, outdoors, doesn't make a difference. Nobody's ever done it. Uh, you had Jesse Mullins three-peat outdoors once. So that happened. And Leclerc, I believe, also three-peated. 17, 18, 19? Or 19, 18, 19, 20, maybe? 
But uh, no one's ever four-peated in a professional setting for the North American Race Factory Gaming Championship Series. And Braden Carter has one race standing between him to maybe make it happen here tonight. All right. Does he get it done? In chat, what do we think? Braden Carter, champ or not? I asked you guys earlier. It seemed like most of you guys thought it would maybe go to Denver. But Eaglin was a little bit off in his heat race. Carter got his win. We also saw Hubbard win his heat. And uh, Seth Shirley had to go through the LCQ, but he's looked fast here tonight. He has the speed to battle with those guys. So we will see if he can do it in this main event. He's going to have to get a good start from the outside. But hey, we saw Partolo. He just won the main event from the LCQ. And uh, even Jack Gatlin was up there mixing it up with those guys as well. And he came through the LCQ. So it's not a foregone conclusion. You just have to get a good start and make it through that first turn. It's a tricky first turn. Hard on the brakes, down the inside. All right, folks, here we go. Round 15 of Moto Option Supercross coming at you from Philadelphia. Our Design Lab co whole shot pick tonight. Is gonna be anybody else other than this man right here, Jacob Hubbard. Well, Leclerc did get it in the heat. Jacob Hubbard, but Hubbard got to the corner first. Let's see if he can maybe control it slightly better this time. Not go just not go as deep. Here we go, folks. Round 15, a moto option supercross from Philadelphia. Coming at you right here, right now. Championship on the line. 20 minutes plus a lap. The 15th round of the series is set to go. Are you ready? We are. Here we go. Turley's got a good jump. Leclerc and Carter. Carter cuts the tough blocks and gets the hole shot. Braden Carter officially gets the Design Lab Co. hole shot, but he cut tough blocks to do it. And he's in second place. Leclerc is up here. I think that's Seabolt in the four spot. And Eagland, is he buried? Yeah, I think he's buried. He's down the field in 12th as Carter tries to take the race lead. Turley and Leclerc down together. Massive pile up. Rogers down. Castellaneta down. Sullivan down. And Carter's into the lead. Braden Carter from Siebel, Jack Haley, Noah Bendis, and Tanner Rogers in the top five. And Leclerc 14th, Colby Eaglin is ninth. If this championship is gonna go to Denver, Eaglin has got to get into second place. If Carter is gonna take off and win this thing, so Carter is just gonna try to put it in cruise control out front. Meanwhile, Noah Bendis and Jack Haley are having a duel of who can have the least amount of skins uploaded for the stream and still get on the podium. Bendis off the track, Haley down the inside is gonna make a pass into third. Sneaking up into the picture is Rogers now, and he is bringing Pablo Vial with him. And it's Heilman, Shirley, Nichols, Marchini, Eaglin slip back to 11. Guys, everybody's kind of hopping awkwardly through the whoops. And Vial just barely made it to the exit before uh, getting a little sideways. So here's Seth Shirley early in this one. He is in eighth behind uh, 250 West Championship rival John Heilman. This is uh, first and second in 250 West point standings, racing east on a 450 here tonight. Carter four seconds out front already, 53-296 fastest stop of the race out front. Absolutely cooking right now. And Shirley quad double to square off the inside. Heilman gets into Rogers anyway and Shirley passes up into fifth. As 
Bendis and Haley are still going at it. Jeremy Sperm George Siebel on the district number 10. And as many people have alluded to, he's playing third person. Battle for third still on. Bendis and Haley. Going at it. Fastest rider on the track last time by. Seth Shirley, 53 8 as Jack Haley goes down. Seth Shirley's going to go by. Marcini will be there. Yes, he will. And Eaglin going through with Rogers as well. So Eaglin's now up to sixth. Good progress already for the 24 machine. He is going to need a ride like this. Keep this championship alive. Leclerc is 19th and is officially going to watch. His title hopes slip away. It was a long shot to begin with. But uh, at least the possibility was still there going into tonight. It is going to be over after this evening. It might be over for everybody as Eaglin gets around Marcini to move into fifth place. And he would like to latch on to Shirley and go towards the front with these guys. Bendis now closing up on Seabolt for second. And Shirley kind of lurking with them. 53-4 last time by for both Carter and Shirley. Shirley also ran a 53-4, but Carter's was slightly better. Eaglin goes 54-1 as Siebold comes up short, and this is going to be second place to Bendis, maybe. Siebold swings wide and kind of just lets him have it as here comes Seth Shirley, now trying to pass into a podium position. Down the inside, going to get Siebold, and Shirley up into third. Next up on his target list, Noah Bendis, who's having a really great ride right now early in this race. 54 flat for Shirley, 53-2, new fastest lap of the race for race leader Braden Carter, 8.7 seconds out front. 53-6 for Eagland, who is now inched up onto his teammate Siebold and dropped the rest of the field behind them. We continue to watch this fight for second place. And it seems like these guys have figured out that over quad quad double is slightly better than the option that we just saw Bendis take right there because Shirley just inched up ever so closer onto Bendis. And I think Carter must have just made a mistake. Shirley is trying this inside in the rollers. It's not going to work. But Carter went from about nine seconds out front to only seven ahead of these guys. And Bendis clean up on top of the whoops right there. Shirley made a slight bobble on entry. And now Noah Bendis goes 53-8. So look at Noah Bendis not laying over one bit for these guys. All right, here comes Eaglin. Closing up on Seabolt for fourth. Ooh, pushed a little wide right there. Maybe on purpose. A little deep into the corner right there. And Seabolt down off the track, going to lose fourth and then some as Rogers goes by, Sullivan goes by, and then Vial lands on Jack Haley as Marcini comes into the back of Seabolt and almost goes down. So that moves Shirley clear of Eaglin by about four seconds. You're going to see Eaglin just in the back of the frame there for a split second. Whoa, 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 Shirley getting sideways. And Bend is down. Well, it took a little bit, but Noah Bendis finally had a big mistake. And this one's going to cost him a podium position for the time being as Eaglin slots into third place. So now he is in a spot where the championship will be clinched by a single point, 53 points as he leaves here. But Eaglin is on Seth Sturley for second to try to push this title fight all the way to Denver. get that up oh, not not gonna quad right there Eaglin's trying to tuck to the inside pushed a little bit far out still gets the super cross triple and you know Shirley at this point does not want to be passed for third he would rather go get the leader but Carter is cooking out front potentially his 28th career supercross win I think and moves one closer to matching Tyson Fresquez, who is on 29 career wins. No one's hit the 30 mark, but Fresquez got close. 
this is this is really to decide the title right here. Shirley, who has already clinched 250 West, can help Carter clinch the 450 title by holding off Colby Eagland for second place here. And Shirley just made a mistake. Eagland doubling to the inside. They land on each other and both go down. All right, so Bendis through, Rogers through, Sullivan through, and now these guys get up together in fifth and sixth, I believe, and Shirley almost lands on the back of Eaglin. Well then, this has a whole new dynamic to it because now these guys are kind of angry at each other, battling each other. And Eaglin just had to jump the whoops because he made a mistake on entry and Shirley goes back by him anyway. So Sullivan, Rogers, and Bendis were the three riders that went by. 22nd lead now for Carter and uh, only eight and a half minutes into this thing, you can start asking the question of how high up in the field does he lap? Because uh, over half the track ahead of pretty much everybody outside of the top 10 already. And Bendis just barely greases that quad. Rogers and Sullivan check up right here. Sully. Really trying to make something happen here on Rogers. I like this corner because if you can just apex into that inside well enough, it really gives you kind of a cool setup for maybe making a pass. Whoa, Rogers jumps all the way he did this in the heat race. I, don't, I guess he's trying to go to that single. Early goes back by. Eaglin goes by. Vial goes by. And Marcini almost got there but just missed out. I can't tell if Rogers was trying to do a, like a quality lap right there because it really wasn't. As Shirley and Sully are going at it. In a battle for third. Just in front of Eaglin. And Noah Bendis is still holding on to second. So... Shirley and Eagland are inching back into a spot where they can fight for second place. But uh, this time they have some company. Luke Sullivan's going to make him work for it. And Noah Bendis having the race of his life. Still in second place at the halfway mark of this one. As 10 minutes have come and gone, 10 minutes and a lap still remain. Braden Carter leads by 23.1 seconds on lap 12. Over table for Shirley. A little short right there, but still able to triple, so kind of salvages the line, and Eaglin couldn't do the option as well. Lands off the track. That's Bendis. Bendis was down out of second. So Sullivan takes over second place, and Eagland has jumped into third as Shirley landed off the track. So we are back into the same scenario we were in before, which is Carter is clinching by a single point as it runs. But if Eagland can get into second place, we go to Denver. Eaglin just wants to keep this title alive as long as he possibly can because even if you think about it, if Eaglin finishes second here, what would need to happen to still win the title is Carter to miss the last two rounds and Eaglin to win out, which is possible but it would be a huge long shot. So really it's just the, the bragging rights I guess of not letting Carter wrap this thing up two rounds early making him work for it all the way to the very end. And, uh, Seth Shirley is back on the rear fender of Colby Eaglin in a fight for third, and he's bringing Pablo Vial with him. These guys are slipping to almost 30 seconds off of the race lead as they both kind of hippity hop through the whoops. Sullivan put in a great 53-6 last time by an inch to another second ahead of these guys. Vial is all over Shirley down the start straight. Got a little bit tight right there for a second. Got 
Man, no one seems to be consistent with this line. This time, Shirley does get the quad double. And Eaglin in front of him had to triple out, so pushed a little deep in the corner. And it looks like Carter just ran a 106.6, so he had a crash last time by only 15 seconds in front of Sullivan, and Eaglin's down. That could be a bit of a nail in the coffin. Obviously not over yet, but he goes from being right behind keeping the title alive to three more positions between him and second. Noah Bendis went through, as did Vial and Shirley. And now Shirley is uh, the next man up to try to close up on Sullivan. Sullivan is still running the most competitive laps out there. Hubbard has climbed to seventh. He did a 54-1. And Castellaneta also did a 54-1. But Sullivan, the only guy up in this mix that is in the low 54s right now. I think uh, Carter's just going to run a good one here, though. Yeah, 53 4. Probably pissed off from that crash and just said, you know what? We'll just uh, lay another heater down. Might as well. Only uh, getting on those loops a little bit awkwardly, but he goes 53 6. Basically, just matched his personal best. And look, you never know if Carter has something weird happen to him here as he laps Alexis LeClaire and really puts the nail in the coffin on LeClaire's season. It takes one weird mistake for Carter and suddenly this thing is five seconds and you're a slide out away from handing over the race lead. By the way, Eaglin is back into fourth. There's Sully, Shirley, and there's Eaglin. And here's Hubbard, who's climbed all the way to fifth. I didn't see how far down he was, but uh, some people saying he went down in the first turn. And now he's up to fifth place. So Hubbard charging forward all throughout the main event thus far and still has a shot, even potentially at a podium, 10 seconds back of Shirley in the final five minutes in a lap of this race. He's got Vial still hanging out behind him in sixth. A really good ride for the 78 machine here to get up into the fifth position and do so with great laps. Just ran a 53-2, his personal best. So he's cooking right now. We've got to hold up and let him cook a little bit. Sixteen second lead now for Braden Carter in the final five minutes of this thing, and unless something goes slightly different down the stretch run and Eaglin can somehow pull off a second place. Carter's going to be your champ. And with a win to solidify it, certainly a big way to do it. Yeah, Turley's out of the race. He's in 22nd place, 11 laps down. So, tough break for... 125 machine. That was game crashed. Hate to see it. Not a lot of battling going on. Everyone's kind of hot lapping. Mind is still pretty close to Castellaneta. And then th this is maybe the closest thing we have in the top 10 right now is Hubbard on Eagland and Vial right behind them both. But not much. Back to our race leader, Braden Carter. And if this is a championship clinching night, what a performance he is doing to make it happen. Switching up and going to the 4-3 line through there instead. And uh, still has Leclerc right behind him. So lap Leclerc and then just kind of bringing him with. As Rogers and Bendis next up. Yeah, Bendis and Rogers right there through the start straight. Be the next two riders that Carter will have to lap. If they're good about it. Well, <laughs> Rogers just crashed. So now the top 10 riders have been lapped. And let's see if Bendis lets him go. Yes, he does. Only eight riders remain on the lead lap of the race. Three minutes and a lap left to go. Carter is putting a hurt on the field. Did it happen to BAC? 
The AFC is in uh, eighth still, so it have uh, maybe you're talking about Caleb Hall. Oh, second place has changed hands. Soli gave it over to Shirley last time by. Now Shirley's nine seconds up on Eaglin. And uh, Eaglin's just desperate now to get into third and maybe hope that Shirley has a late crash. It is dwindling down, that is for sure. So it's turning into a bit of a victory lap for this man. The party will be big tonight. And Braden Carter can pick this up as Shirley goes around Larson, who is down. And Eaglin is just dealing with heavy pressure from Hubbard. And the title is going to be clinched as is, so Hubbard is just trying to make it even that much more so clinched, I guess. Obviously, he wants to finish fourth. And Hubbard's still in a big fight with Eaglin for second in the championship, so that's probably even more so the motivation to get around the 24 machine. And a uh, mistake right there, so now they're on Seth Shirley. Whoa, wait a minute. Not over yet, because only three seconds up the road is Sullivan. And Eaglin's trying to pass Shirley to get into third, and he might do it right there with that move. It's tight. And Hubbard down the inside is trying to pass Eaglin as they go into the whoops. Shirley hangs on. And we've got two laps, I think, left to figure this out. Uh, maybe three. I think they're that far behind Carter. 30-second race lead for Carter now. But this is where... Eaglin has to get to is Sullivan. There's Shirley. There's Eaglin as they get around uh, Bodie Parker. Put him another lap down, I think. Or maybe they're just finally la lapping him, I should say. Oh, Hubbard wants to get Eaglin for this fourth position. And Shirley, in turn, is trying to go get Sullivan. Shirley on Sully. Sullivan's going to fight back, but Shirley's going to get second place. And so Shirley's back into the two spot as Eaglin just the whoops are eating him up right now. He can't get through him. Time has expired, but it's still two to go. That's how far Carter is in the race lead right now. And he is lapped Vial by the looks of it. So only the top five are still on the lead lap. And it's going to come down to if Eaglin can get to Shirley. Well, that's not going to help. Seth Shirley exit stage right in the rhythm section. Going to get back on right as Sully gets there. And Eaglin triples by Sully to the inside. Is he going to pass Shirley too? No. But now it's three riders battling for second. And Eaglin's trying to keep this championship alive by finishing second in this race. Outside doesn't get the preferred options through the inside of the roller and Sullivan makes a mistake. Eaglin to the outside is just trying to get these whoops right once. So we won't know until this is over if the title is clinched or not for Carter. Shirley's trying to hold on for second for one more lap and Hubbard is trying to get Eaglin to make sure it's clinched no matter what. Oh, Shirley was down! Now it's up for Hubbard to make it happen as Braden Carter takes the win in Philadelphia and Eaglin is in a spot to make this title go to Denver if he holds on. Hubbard is trying to push him to make it go the other direction. Great job by Eaglin to defend. Four riders in the air together for second. Hubbard pushes him out, but Sully, oh no, Eaglin still jumps in and now they're all messing each other up behind that. Sully gets back into third place as Eagland through the whoops one last time is swapping. He's getting sideways. He's oh, he's down. Sullivan gets into second. And that's going to be Hubbard third, Eagland in fourth. And the championship goes to Braden Carter again in 2024. 
Eaglin went into the last turn with the title pushing to Denver, but it doesn't work out. Your 2024 Moto Options Supercross champion is Braden Carter for the fourth time in a row. He gets it done. Of course, it is unofficial, just in case there's any post-race penalties or anything like that, but we'll see if we can talk to the man. See if he's on. We'll see if we can get the newly crowned or recrowned champ in for a quick interview here. A real quick uh, do something here. Whoop, sorry about that. This. All right. See if we can get Carter in here in just a minute. I, I don't think he's in Discord right now, so that's also not helping our case. Uh, we're going to go to this screen really quick. Yeah. All right, we're going to wait for just a minute and see if Carter gets on. Go back to this screen. Sorry, we're just we're messing up a bunch of stuff here, but uh unofficially Brandon Carter is your champ. And we are about to pull the man of the hour in. Give him a quick call. What's up, brother? Oh, what's up? What is up? Brayden Carter, right. the champ, the champ again. Yes, sir. Did you know? Man, that was a fun race to watch right there at the end for P2. Yeah, so you pulled off the track at the end and you thought, oh, okay, I guess these guys are uh, still yeah, doing it. Yeah, when I, because when I pulled off, uh, Colby was in second. I just needed Hubbard to get Colby, you know, so I was rooting him on. <laughs> and then Colby kind of threw there at the end. Sucks to see, but yeah, good, well, you, good for me. Your champ again, fourth year in a row, and uh, man, what a way to do it! Must maybe your most dominating win of the season. You, know, I think you only had one crash mid race. Otherwise, you walked away from these guys. So just take us through the emotions. You're the first and only four time repeat champion in MX Simulator history. Yeah, dude, it's dope. That race was uh, it was fun. I almost had a perfect moto going there too. The only crash I had was uh. I ended the tr the triple and then got punted by Leclerc as a lapper, but uh, yeah, it was a super fun season. Uh, fun to battle these guys. You know, most of these guys race race super clean, so it's it's fun to be out here and uh, get to race every week against the best. Yeah, I think you moved to twenty eight career wins now. I know we keep we're not one hundred percent sure on the total win total, but I think it's twenty eight. So you're one back of Tyson Fresquez. You're you're on the doorstep, man, of all time. You you have four titles now. You've matched Tyson Fresquez. You're right behind him on matching him on wins. Uh, pretty incredible how quickly it's happened. But you're uh, you're up there as maybe the greatest Supercross player in this game's history, man. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. You know, four years ago, I never won a single race in my life. So, or I guess five years ago when I was in two fifties, but it. It's definitely uh, weird seeing my name up there, you know? In, the, in this season specifically, um, and maybe it's a little bit tough because it's still not over, but how would you rank this season in terms of the difficulty of the competition and, and how you felt this year uh, compared to past years? You know, I think my speed was probably... It's probably the fastest I've been out of all four of the championships. Um, but, you know, com that comes with a lot of mistakes like last year i think uh i didn't finish off the podium till the second to last round so like i overall was a better racer but i think i'm a little faster this year and the competition this year you know colby missing that one round really hurt him uh he could have been there and it probably would have made me like you know not as comfortable so you never know what could have happened there but it was super fun all year man 
Yeah, it seems like from week to week, you guys are trying to outdo each other on who can crash the least or have the least mm-hmm. amount of mistakes in the main event. Like uh, like you said, you almost had a perfect race, but it it seems like it's almost needed in this day and age where you guys, you can't crash. Like you will lose the race if you crash. In this case, you still won, but it's tough, man. You guys are pushing the limit every single time. Oh yeah, you, you, you either have to be significantly faster than the rest of the field and and then maybe you could crash once or twice and still win. But if you're just average pace like the other guys and you, you crash once, I mean, there's like almost no shot you're going to finish in the top five, you know? Yeah. So four-time champion, I'm sure that is going to be uh, celebrated a little bit here and we'll let you go in just a minute. But lastly, uh, who would you like to thank, man? You're a four-time champion in this game. Man, obviously you and... Uh, What's his what's his name? The old guy that used to do the streams. Uh this is Def. You guys for getting me into the game. Uh Nathan Nickerson. All my friends. Yeah, Nathan Nickerson. There you go. All my friends for uh showing up each week. My team, they're always hanging out in Discord, makes the Wednesday nights fun. And you know, the track crew, thanks to BAC for doing every single round this year so far, I'm pretty sure. And Kohenauer and all the boys for making this happen. And uh, thanks to all the racers out there for making it fun. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah, That's well, about it. You're on a roll right now. Do we see Carter step up outdoors? Oh, man. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> touched outdoors all year. Um, you know, I'll, I'll throw my, my hat in the bag, you know, the first round. See if I can pull out a moto win or something. But... Once we're uh, once we're out of it, we're out of it for outdoors. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we'll let you go celebrate. Enjoy this night. Four-time champion. One of the greatest to ever do it. And, uh, man. Yeah, awesome. thanks for the streams, man. All year. Love to watch them back. Absolutely, dude. We great appreciate content. It. We appreciate the great racing you provide. And many congratulations on your fourth title. Thank you so much, man. All right, that is Braden Carter, four-time Moto Options Supercross champion. The only person ever to four-peat the, the championship as well. He and Tyson Fresquez, the only four-time champions in Moto Options Supercross, but Fresquez didn't do them consecutively. Carter has that over Fresquez now, and uh, two races to go. He might also have the all-time wins record over Fresquez before we know it. So that's going to do it for us here at Round 15 of Moto Options Supercross from Philadelphia. Brayden Carter is your champion. We only have one title left to decide, and it's that 250 East Championship. One point in it between Balzer and Seth Carr going into the showdown in Salt Lake City. But of course, we'll be back with you guys next week for round 16 from Denver. Uh, Going to be a fun race to watch Seth Shirley go for yet another win in the 250 West Division. He could try to become the all-time leader in 250 Supercross wins there. And Brayden Carter looks to equal Tyson Fresquez next week with his 29th career Supercross win. That's from us here in Philly, from all of us here at Start Your Systems, myself, Andrew Wood, who's not here with us, but we always appreciate the support. Evan Holt putting on great video production every week for us as well. The Race Factor Gaming track crew for another great track. And of course, Jeremy Cohenauer and Tyler Lang for putting on the race series every single week. Thanks guys for tuning in to Philadelphia, and we'll see you guys next week in Denver. So long for now.